Hello, I'm Hilary, Pastor Derek's wife. I'm so glad that I've got this wonderful opportunity to share with you about praying in tongues. I feel really excited about it. Praying in tongues has made a huge difference in my life. And I, I do pray that also when you begin to pray in tongues or are encouraged to pray more in, in tongues, that you will find the blessing too. So I wanted to start, first of all, we, we base everything on the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. All scripture is inspired by God. That means God breathed. Supposing you have a balloon and you blow it up, you've breathed into that balloon. It's the same thing. God breathed into his word and gives it life. Life for those who receive it by faith. And it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Well, there's not going to be any reproof, correction or training today, but I just really wanted to share with you the value, the wonderful value of praying in tongues. Um, I want to read uh, part of Ezekiel chapter 47 about the river of life, because when we pray in tongues, a river of life flows out of us from our spirit through our mouth and really brings miraculous changes. So we're starting at Ezekiel chapter 47 um, and I'm choosing verse 9. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, <coughs> pardon me, wherever the rivers go will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. And then to verse 12. Uh, along the bank of the river on this side and that will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary where God is. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. God has always, always, always intended for us to have healing. And then we turn to the book of Revelation uh, chapter 22, verses 1 through 3. This is the King, New King James Version. Um, the river of life. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. As I explained, speaking in tongues, praying in tongues, is like a river flowing out of your spirit where the Holy Spirit dwells. And it's a river of healing. And you would have maybe words of, of wisdom and of knowledge and of prophecy. And it bypasses our intellect and prays the perfect will. Can you imagine? Isn't that wonderful? Praying the absolute perfect will of God every time when we pray in tongues. All these gifts are not our possession, but they're used by the Holy Spirit as God wills and so blesses other people as well as us. Um, it bypasses our intellect. You see, our intellect and what we know about a situation they tend to mess up the prayers because we pray what we think we need or the person needs. But the Spirit of God prays directly from Father God and God alone knows exactly what we need. And so, um, as I said, it bypasses our intellect and it prays the perfect will of God. Um, as I said, these, these gifts are not our possession. We do not have a gift of. It is by the Holy Spirit as the Spirit wills. It enables us to pray for others, even people that we, we don't know, actually. Um, I, sometimes I find that when I say a face comes to me, it's like in my mind, I see a, a picture of somebody. Maybe I've seen them on television or I've, I've seen a photograph of them or, or even I've heard of them. And the Spirit of God, when I'm having time with the Lord, will bring that person to my notice. Um, and what I, the Lord has trained me to do is I need to pray in tongues for them right then and there. Although I don't know what is going on and I probably never will this side of eternity. 
And so it enables us to pray for others, as I said, even for people that we don't know. And we can pray deep, personal things that God is never, ever going to reveal to another human being. Do not believe what anybody says that God has revealed something about your past um, because he's not a tittle-tat. Well, at least this is my 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 understanding of the Lord um, and my experience with the Lord. He doesn't. I mean, someone came to me, this is years and years and years ago, and said, thus saith the Lord, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it was all lies. And I thought, even if it was true, would my father God go and reveal that to somebody else? No, he'd reveal it to me. And maybe in extraneous circumstances, if somebody is not listening, not listening, and not listening, maybe in the end God will use somebody, but they would deliver it with the love of God. And it enables us to pray mysteries. I think that's exciting. We can pray mysteries. We can pray God's will into this country, into this, into this world, into our lives. And so my, my understanding is not involved. It tells us when we pray in tongues, the mind is, is not involved. Um, and as I say, if my mind was involved, honestly, it would so, so totally spoil it. And it would very, it would greatly limit the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you know, the Holy Spirit will give us a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a word of prophecy. But it's always the gift of the Holy Spirit. And one thing that I, I did learn um, when we went to Bible school, don't be searching and reaching for a word because your flesh can um, oblige. Um, we don't want that. We only want the word of the Lord. And that will come when we're praying in tongues, worshipping the Lord, usually when we're not even thinking about having a word for anybody. And it enables us to pray into situations that can be so horrendous that one's mind cannot take it in and you really wouldn't know what to pray. Let's say this explosion um, in Beirut. I mean, I was just so shocked when I saw it. I was so grateful for the gift of tongues to be able to start praying for those poor darling people. And there are wonderful stories coming out of Lebanon of how God actually um, protected people's lives. Anyway, and it's not limited to our puny puny um, knowledge of a situation. Uh, praying in tongues is, in my estimation, the purest form of prayer. And it's the kind of prayer that gets to the heart of the matter. Um, I think I will share this. I was thinking, shall I share it? Shall I not? This is about Pastor Derek and me. And um, now we were in the same church and um, Pastor Derek hardly ever noticed me. And I thought he was the great, greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, I mean, far more attractive than a piece of sliced bread. Anyway, um, we had a prayer group which Derek came to in my house and Peter Atwood, who's a good friend of ours, um, we were all been praying in tongues and he said, um, Derek and Hilary, I have a word for you. I need to explain that Derek's mum, um, I knew Derek's mum and we were, we were friends, but she lives in Switzerland and she had invited me to spend Christmas with the family because I was going to be all on my own. And so um, they knew that we were going to be flying out to Switzerland together. Um, and Peter said the Lord had said that Derek and I must absolutely every single morning um, go out somewhere quiet. We couldn't in mum's flat and she wouldn't understand anyway. And we were to go and pray in tongues every single day for the whole time that we were there. And we were diligent, I promise you, we were really diligent. But um, people laugh at this, but honestly, the only place we could pray in were the woods. And so we would walk up to the woods every single day and we would pray in tongues. And it was lovely. We could be loud. Nobody else was around. They didn't think two maniacs had been let loose in the woods. And so we prayed and prayed and prayed. And I think after about a week of, of it was, yes, it was after Christmas, um, we were praying together and quite unexpectedly, um, Pastor Derek put his arm around my shoulders. If I can explain that our belief at that time, please don't think I'm believing this for everybody, was that um, you don't touch. You really do not touch unless you're very, very, very serious about your relationship. So he put his arm around me. And ladies, uh, I think maybe you will understand how I felt because 
um, I'm thinking of um, Sense and Sensibility. And, you know, the older sister, she was in love with this, this man. And then she'd been told that he was married. Uh, and then he comes to visit. Uh, and she, her mother asks for, in her behalf, you know, how is your wife, how is um, Mrs. whatever it is. Um, and he said, oh, she, she's fine. And she said, um, your wife. And he said, no. I'm not married. I didn't marry this particular individual. My brother did. And um, the heroine, she bursts into tears. And, go, <laughs> and that's what I did. And poor Pastor Derek thought that actually he had offended me greatly. And it couldn't have been anything different, uh, more different to that. And actually, as Derek and I were talking yesterday or the day before, I said to Derek, when did you propose to me? He said, I don't even remember proposing. And I thought, no, I didn't either. So strangely enough, the arm round the shoulder was practically a proposal. And actually, we got married six months later um, to the surprise of everybody because um, Derek had never had a boyfriend, girlfriend, sorry, girlfriend. And I didn't have a boyfriend. And people thought that we really weren't that close, which we weren't until that wonderful moment and we've been praying together and I believe that we've been praying our future together had I known I would have wrecked it with my um, enthusiasm and excitement so uh, what was the result romance and marriage and I can't say that this is going to happen to everybody else but certainly I realized that I was praying through my future. Derek was praying through our, our future together, but we had no idea and we couldn't spoil it because we didn't know what we were praying. And another time when I prayed a lot in tongues um, was that my father belonged to an association uh, which was non-Christian. And, um, you know, we, we hadn't thought much of it until I was born again. And I realized that this was not right. And I'd heard a lot that it, it's not good. Um, it was not good supernatural. And so I, I'd spoken to my dad about it. And I said, Daddy, I'm really worried about you. He said, you worried about me? I'm worried about you. Because, you know, I was born again and praying in tongues. And then, um, bless him, he became desperately, no, forgive me. The Lord told me that I had to make a decision to, I needed to decide between my father and the Lord. And if I chose the Lord, I was going to have to leave home and move into my little house, which my parents had so kindly purchased for me, which was rented out, had been rented out, but was empty at the time. And so um, I remember praying all night, oh, Father God, um, I want to be more afraid of you than I am of my daddy. Uh, and I don't think I slept a wink that night. And in the morning, I, when I saw my father, I said, Daddy, I am so sorry, but I do have to ask you to choose. Um, it's, I ask you to choose between, free, between this organization or me. And without a second's interval, he said, I choose the other. And I said, I have to go. So, OK go and so I packed my little bag and off I went and it was a really 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 difficult time and yet a wonderful time because I drew so close to the Lord in my little house and um, uh, a, a lady evangelist had come to the church actually at that very time and uh, she was staying in my in my little house uh, and she said, let's pray together. Uh, let's pray in tongues, you see. And so I would pray, Kura Badi Deliana. For, I mean, five minutes was, was max for me. And I stopped. And she said, do you call that praying? I said, yes. She said, that's not praying. We're going to pray for an hour. And we did. And first of all, honestly, I was absolutely exhausted. And she made me do it the whole time she was there, which was only three days. But, you know, the amazing thing was that it became normal for me. And every morning before I did anything else, I was at my prayer chair and I was praying in tongues at least for an hour every single day. And what um, my pastors noticed was that since I'd been doing that, 
in a service, I would suddenly get a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. Never happened before. Um, and I was happy, actually. I was sad because I was separated from my family, but God did bring us together, and I was able to lead my father to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I didn't say another word to him, uh, but he stopped seeing the people he'd been seeing. He wouldn't allow them inside the house. He was well and truly born again. And so sometimes we may have to pay a price, but oh, the, re the reward is overwhelming. Let's get back to the scripture. Um, in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, um, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Uh, as I, I mentioned, praying in tongues is the purest form of prayer because we're praying from our spirit by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Um, and we pray by faith, trusting the Holy Spirit for every word that we speak. And I wanted to share with you, actually, there um, are a couple medical surveys uh, called um, Praying in Tongues Medical Survey, and you'll find it on YouTube. And this particular one that I wanted to share with you is the University of Pennsylvania, a Dr. Andrew Newberg. And he was investigating medically the phenomenon of praying in tongues. Um, and he, as he says in, in his write-up, he said it's not a, a normal uh, language which would activate the frontal lobe. I didn't know this. The frontal lobe of your brain is the area that controls your speech. And so uh, he had a question. What happens to the human brain during the deepest moments of faith when someone's praying in tongues? Um, and uh, as he he... he saw on the scans that uh, when they prayed in their own native tongue, and this time it was English, um, the frontal part of the brain was very active. But the brain scans um, have proved that the frontal part of the brain is pretty much inactive when we're praying in the spirit. Um, 1 Corinthians 14, 14 says, Paul says, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. And that's proved by um, a brain scan. And then the anterior part of the brain that is active when we're praying in tongues is only active when praying in tongues, thus proving that praying in tongues is supernatural. I understand that the anterior part of, of the brain is very, very, very rarely used. Um, Dr. Newburn discovered that what happens to them uh, neurologically to the, the people who um, allowed themselves to be brain scanned whilst they were praying. Um, he said the, the neurological findings were pretty much what they described was happening to them spiritually. And so Dr. Newberg um, took two scans of a pastor, one when he was praying in English and one when he was praying in tongues. Um, and the question is, was there a difference? Oh yes, there really was a difference. When he was praying in English, the frontal lobe, which controls speech, was very active. And when he was praying in tongues, um, for the most part, the frontal part of his brain was quiet. Dr. Newberg said that the results were more dramatic uh, when the subject was alone in the room, when the, um, the line team weren't in there, and when they were not told to pray in tongues on demand. It was when they would have a time of worshipping the Lord and then flowing into tongues. And he said the brain scans taken then proved that there is a part of our brain over which we have no control is activated when the Holy Spirit is inter interceding through us. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg investigated uh, what happens when Buddhist monks pray and when Franciscan uh, nuns pray? And actually, they were both the same. In their cases, the activity in the frontal lobe was very much increased. They were praying in their own language. The results, it's noticeably different what happens to tongue speakers. Um, and uh, Dr. Newberg was at pains to say that he was not out to prove anything but he can only tell you what happens in the brain and not why it does. 
and so um, a Dr. Carl Peterson from um, the USA again uh, uh, examined the the effects of extend all, extended verbal praying in in tongues, and he had a lot of of um, questions uh, people were asking him, and to to sh to really cut it right down. Uh, what he said was, it's a benefit to the human immune system, i.e. the immunity um, enhanced by chemicals released from part of the brain, which is more or less dormant. So he came to the same discoveries as Dr. Newberg. Um, he says that chemicals are released into the brain, which activates the human immune system. Therefore, praying in tongues during extended vocal prayer causes a major stimulation in these parts of the brain. And those of you medics will understand main, mainly the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus has direct regulation of four major systems in the human body, mainly the pituitary gland and all target endocrine glands. Um, two, the total immune system. Three, the entire autonomic system for the production of brain hormones called endorphins. And I've heard, you know, when you run, I believe that these are increased. And also encephalons, which are chemicals the body produces. And they're 100 to 200 times more powerful than morphine. And so we see that a very significant percentage of the central nervous system is directly and indirectly uh, activated in the process of extended verbal and musical prayer over a period of time. And so really, to, to put it in a nutshell, um, these results show that there is a significant release of brain hormones, which in turn increase the body's general immunity. So remember, when you're praying in tongues, you are actually um, increasing your immune system. But if you only pray rarely in tongues, it's not going to make any difference. It's only if you pray regularly every day in tongues, there will be a difference in your health. I found that when I, when I prayed a lot in tongues, if I got an infection, it was over very quickly. If I had an injury, it got healed quickly. When I stopped praying regularly in tongues, uh, that didn't happen. Um, and we, Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit and uh, Mark 16, 17, these powerful works will be done by those who have put their trust in me. In my name, they will put out demons. They will speak with languages they have never learned. Jesus says it's good, therefore it's good. His opinion is the only opinion that matters. Scripture is the only opinion that matters. Whatever you have been taught, Scripture is the only opinion that matters. And when Paul went to Ephesus, uh, he found some new converts. And um, he said to them, have you received the Holy Spirit? They said, we've never even heard there's a Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, he, he got them baptized in, in the name of Jesus. And then he laid his hands upon them and the Holy Spirit came on them. They began speaking with tongues and prophesying. And they were in about all about uh, 12 men. And Paul said uh, to the Corinthians, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. Dr. Newberg survey. And Jude, you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We pray by faith, trusting the Holy Spirit uh, to provide the words. And I think actually there was another medical survey Forgive me if this is not quite accurate, um, but I did hear that those who pray um, a lot in tongues, um, their immune systems were boosted um, about 30%. That's, that's big. And so um, I just want to encourage you. Can I suggest, I mean, this, this is doable. It's so important to pray for members of our family in the spirit because especially we've been in lockdown and you're, you know, on top of one another. And I, I know that sometimes people's tempers have become frayed and we have an enemy who is very helpful in that area. Um, to pray in tongues for your husband every single day, three minutes, just three minutes at the beginning of the day. Or husbands, pray in tongues 
uh, in, for three minutes for your wife and then for each child. And I know, you know, Pastor Derek and I, we are fortunate. We live in a house big enough that we can both be praying at the same time in different rooms. But um, when I think of John Wesley, his mother had 17 children and when she wanted to pray, she put her pinafore over her head and they all knew they had to be silent and she would pray. So I'm not suggesting actually you put a bag over your head and start praying in front of the whole family, but actually there is a way. And I found that going out for a walk and praying in tongues, and I'm probably one of the few people who likes wearing a mask because when I'm wearing a mask, nobody can see that I'm praying in tongues. And so I want to pray for you, Father God, in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are seeking you and really want to receive the gift of your Holy Spirit praying in tongues, Lord, I ask you as they ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will baptize them in the Holy Spirit, for you are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you go to our website, oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk, you'll see on the online shop all the different products we have available, books, CDs, DVDs. I just wanted to draw your attention that we have a number of special DVDs available on, on about different locations in Israel and uh, about Bible chronology and other subjects. On top of that, we actually have over 500 different DVDs available of all the TV programs we've ever done on different subjects. Now, there are too many of them to kind of list to you, but you can phone the office, you can send an email to us, uh, at uh, obc.church at yahoo.co.uk uh, and you can ask for a list of all our DVDs and then you can perhaps order the ones that take your fancy. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11am Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, OX3 7QH. You can watch more of our teachings on our Roku channel and Derek Walker's YouTube channel. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products, where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086